Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the next episode of the Aurora Forex uh, C Sharp Ship Design Tutorial Series. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing um, ship design doctrines, essentially, or philosophy around it. Uh, this will be in regards to military ship design philosophy, um, and we'll be going over different doctrines you want to select before you build a ship, their positives and also their negatives. In Aurora, there are many different kinds of these philosophies and doctrines, as well as ways to approach the game in terms of both military and also commercial. But in today's video, I will, as I said, be discussing some of the most popular military design doctrines and breaking down their pros and cons as I go through the video. Now, obviously, there will be doctrines that will be in regards to how you deal with tactical and other kinds of situations, but these will be more the th stuff you're going to be selecting. And this also doesn't mean that you have to pick one or the other, it's just highlighting the benefits of certain weapons and certain ways of playing the game, and then, you know, looking at other ways and other, other benefits to playing the game. So, um, on the screen, there will be, as I'm discussing them, there will be text and it will be going through this is mainly going to be a talking video um there will be timestamps and chapters you can go and go to which part you want to look at um so i won't be showing too much off in the game itself i'm just going to be talking about it and kind of discussing why why not why this works you know stuff like that and there'll be images of on screen to kind of illustrate that accordingly um, the next tutorial after this will be commercial ship design philosophy and kind of going through that and, and, and talking about logistics and, and how that works out for, for you. But today's video will be military. So, first off, let's look at what primary doctrines are there. There is, number one, missile doctrine. This encompasses anything to do with missiles that are used in primary primary focus. So this is using uh, lots of missiles in swarm missile doctrine, which means you're getting as many launches as possible and launching at the enemy with very small uh, missiles. But you're trying to overwhelm the enemy's point defense systems in such a regard um, that they can't handle it. This is otherwise known as AMM spam. Uh, A A M M spam. My bad. Um, and it can be extremely effective. We also have long-range missiles. So this is a benefit of missile doctrine is that you can have extremely long range with two-stage missiles and all sorts, um, and they can be extremely beneficial. Uh, missile doctrine also allows you know incorporation of missiles with other weapons using AMMs with PD to be very effective and stuff like that. That's a few benefits of missile doctrine, and we'll be talking more in a little bit. Um, then we have beam doctrine. So beam doctrine is a doctrine where you know you're, you're primarily focusing on beam weapons. There's many different kinds of beam weapons, um, and you're generally going for that close quarters combat. Um, you're incorporating heavy gorse and rail guns for point defense systems, and you're generally do going much faster than than missile ships would overall. We then have the third doctrine we'll be discussing today, which is going to be the carrier and fighter doctrine, uh, which has benefits such as long-range capability, being risk-averse, and also being able to spam out fighters in the kind of a swarm to unleash massive alpha strikes worth of damage. So those are the main doctrines that we're going to be looking at today. Now, there obviously are more, and this is mainly my opinions on these things. So feel free to comment below on your thoughts around um, what we're going to be looking at today. So now we're going to discuss the positives and negatives of each of the primary doctrines in order. Um, so this will be on screen, at least it should be anyway. Um, and so here we go. So missile doctrines. Number one, positives. Uh, ability to fire from distance, as missiles have the longest range of any weapon in the game. Yes, so missiles are able to fire at extremely farther distances than beam weapons. Um, beam weapons usually have a max range of about a million kilometers on the highest end, um, while missiles can go up to 80 million kilometers on ion tech missile missiles. Um, so you can get some pretty insane ranges with missile weapons, but obviously, you know, there are negatives which will be going over soon, but that is one of the main positives when you're looking at selecting what weapon you want to put on the ship, is that missiles will allow you to fire from quite considerable range. Number two, or B, uh, can kill the most amount of civilians of any weapon with 100,000 dead civilians per one warhead. This can also, though, be a negative. Uh, so yeah, um, the... the the mi missiles are the best thing at murdering populations. Uh, the highest, the, the the biggest missile can kill 300 million um, aliens, um, which is very, very significant. Um, and as such, 
they are good in that regard and also bad because you obviously if you're trying to take over a planet you don't want to kill everyone on there and you don't want to blow up all the installations but for killing STOs or doing stuff like that yeah that they are extremely effective at, at that um in general uh now we're on to c ability to fire massive waves at once overwhelming enemy defenses unlike beam weapons that need some time to really get their dps up aka alpha strike so this is that alpha strike capability if you have three ships with box launchers like mass box launchers on them you can fire a lot of missiles at once in one salvo in one wave of missiles and this is something to consider as well you don't need to constantly be firing missiles you only need to fire every three minutes every four minutes you don't need to constantly fire them because of the range advantage you're going to have so being able to fire a lot of missiles instead of just a few at the same time means that you can overwhelm point defenses um and and, and the ability for the enemy to actually shoot the missiles down um so you can you can hit with a lot of damage all at once unlike beam weapons which can rely on consistently hitting the enemy over and over and over again and peppering them okay moving on to d um, has access to two-stage missiles and radiation warheads, which can massively increase range and also payload, while radiation warheads can or can devastate populations. So you have access to two-stage missiles, uh, which you know allow you to to do things such as um, have much farther range, have multiple warheads in a missile. Um, you know stuff like that and radiation you can devastate entire populations with radiation warheads and basically you know cause massive radiation poisoning to the entire population and radiate the entire world um some something else to consider though as well with missile doctrine is you also have access to mines and also buoys which i am not going to talk too much about but that is also something to consider now we're going to move on to the negatives of missile doctrine what are the negatives well number one they're the only weapon in the game that has actual ammunition um, as such, they need constant resupply uh, of the warships that are using the missiles. This is also costly and adds on top of the fact weapons are malfun can malfunction and cost S S MSP. This is all weapons. All weapons can malfunction a 1% chance. A box launcher can malfunction. A particle lance can malfunction, etc. But this, but this is in regards to the fact that missiles you have to have a logistics chain you have to be producing ordnance you have to do all of these things to keep the missile supplied where with beam weapons really all you need to do is just put them on the ship give them enough power if they're not gorse and make sure that they're being maintained and you basically can infinitely fire those weapons so that is one of the main negatives of missile um missiles and using missiles as your primary weapon b in conjunction with killing lots of civilians, it is also a negative, as missiles do massive damage to population centers and installations, and collateral can be an issue in comparison with beam weapons. So yeah, as I said, in comparison with beam weapons, uh, missiles do 100,000 casualties per warhead, while beam weapons do 2,000 per damage. So you're going to do a lot more damage with missiles because obviously they have more area of effect than you are going to do with beams, but that can be a negative and a benefit. So something to consider. No, moving on to the next one. Uh, number C, can be hit or miss weapons as they can be shot down and they either work or they do not in engagements. And if they do not work, your fleet is effectively useless when the enemy gets closer. So unlike beam weapons, missiles take time to get there and they also can be shot down, which means that sometimes if you just don't have enough missiles, you're just not going to have any weapons because they're just going to shoot down all your missiles and get close enough and hit you with beam weapons and then you're just dead. Um, so this is something you gotta be very, you know, careful about, and it's something you gotta consider when you are going for, for missile ships, is you need wanna have that backup weapon to be able to defend yourself. And also you need to make sure you're you're adding enough missiles to actually be able to break through the enemy. Okay. Next one. While AMMs, so this is anti-missile missiles, can be effective in conjunction with other weapons, they are not effective on their own or until higher level techs. So AMMs are not very effective on their own just because you're gonna run out of AMMs to actually shoot. And also, um, depending on how fast the missile's going, AMMs have a lot lower chance to actually destroy a large quantity of missiles in comparison to Gorse or Railguns. Um, and they're not that effective until you can get really high speeds out of very small missiles. Because at lower techs, you need every little bit of MSP you can get on those AMMs to even make them somewhat effective. So that is something to consider. So that's Missile Doctrine, so that's timestamp there, and then we'll be moving on to Beam Weapon Doctrines. Again, this is about ship design doctrines, not 
military doctrines in terms of tactical combat, but this kind of just discussing beam weapons, missiles, carriers, all that kind of stuff, and and, and trying to understand their benefits and cost negatives and, and stuff like that. So beam weapon doctrines, positives. Uh, a. Besides the chance to malfunction, beam weapons are the most reliable and consistent weapon uh, in terms of damage as they require no ammunition to fire with, which means no logistics are required for them solely. Yep, pretty much what I said earlier with, with missiles. Beam weapons are very reliable in that aspect and consistent in their damage once they are able to do it. Uh, next, um, they are extremely flexible as there are many kinds of beam weapons that are best for different things, giving great choice and ability to deal with many kinds of threats depending on what you need to design. So you, there's so many types of beam weapons, there's plasma carronades, particle lances, um, and, all, and, and, be, and particle beams, and lasers, and, and rail guns, and there's all these different weapons, and I will make a video in regards to each of the weapons and going down a list and, and basically talking about each individual weapon and what they do, and what their benefit is, what their non-benefit is, and stuff like that. But suffice it to say, you have a lot of choice, whether it be particle lances that can basically, pe you know, be a, a woodpecker and start peckering into the armor in a single straight line, or it be lasers with an extremely high DPS. Um, there's so many different flexibilities, and it allows you great choice to deal with many kinds of threats, depending on what you need to design. Okay, moving on to the next question. Uh, beam weapons have arguably the best point defense with gauss and railguns. They are part the the primary defense options against missiles and are a direct counter in that regard. So with gauss, for example, uh, my Vanguard the class destroyer that can fire two hundred and fifty six rounds every five seconds. That's a lot of missiles it can shoot out of the sky. Now obviously it's only going to be able to shoot twenty out of the sky due to speed limitations. But with Gorse and Railguns, they're the primary, you know, defensive option. Railguns, they just fire so many shots that early on, they're just the best counter. Um, so that is something really to consider. You can also put beam weapons in turrets and have them independently move about. And there's so many different amazing options for point defense systems there that not only deal with missiles, but also fighters and other things. Moving on to the next one. Has the best damage per second of any weapon once you get close enough. So in comparison with their really bad range... Um, if you get close enough, you are going to nail a missile, uh, a missile enemy because you can keep firing every every very 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 quickly. While missile launch is going to take much longer to reload it. So once you get on top of a, of someone using missiles, you can just absolutely annihilate them with just continuous streams of beam weapon fire. Okay, moving on to the negatives. So number one uh, requires power plants. And most of the weapons besides Gorse. So most weapons besides Gorse require power plants, uh, which means that they require power. And you've got to factor that into the design. That's a negative. Um, but that kind of makes up in comparison to missiles where you need to add the magazine um, and you need to add, you know, the launcher and all that stuff for them. So, you know, a negative benefit. Uh, next one, uh, they're extremely short range in comparison with missiles and they're essentially harmless until they get close to distance between them and the enemy fleet that is using missiles. Pretty much. Um, they are very, very short range, you know, as I said, and missiles are very, very long range. So if you're running at an enemy, you are going to be harmless to them until you get close enough. And so you're going to be tanking hits and shooting missiles down until you get there. So, th so that's why speed speed for, for beam weapons is so, so important is to not get hit and close the distance as quickly as you can. Um, and it's why, you know, um, you need to have that point defense system really, really good. Um, next question, or ne not next question, but ne next negative. Uh, it takes time and even the fight to be able to dish out enough damage to effectively deal with an enemy. So unlike missiles where they're very alpha strike capable, so firing as many at once and then doing as much damage at once, beam weapons tend to be more fire, fire, fire. They take some time before they really start making that dps worth it so you, you have to consider that as part of the negative as well um next one uh point defense can be hit or miss and if it hit and if it's missed you are essentially defenseless as you suicide run at the enemy this is correct if you are not able to shoot down the missiles well all the missiles and if it's just three missiles get in and they keep firing them at you you're not going to be in a fun time because once one ship goes, they're going to let more missiles in and more missiles in, and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And so point defense is an extremely hit or miss thing that you have to consider. Okay, now we're moving on to carrier and fighter doctrine. So, 
carrying fighter doctrine, meaning carriers, carrying fighters or FACs and stuff like that. Um, that are their offensive weapons instead of the carrier itself. So let's go. Number one, positives. Carrier doctrine can be extremely beneficial as it allows you to not risk your larger vessels, but you're still able to deal a lot of damage in the form of fighters, which can operate far away from your capital ships. This is correct. You can keep your carriers behind somewhere while your fighters go and actually do the fighting. So you can keep your expensive capital ships protected while you send your more exposable fighters. Fighters are much smaller and harder to hit, and all the text as such can be used to launch surprise attacks and then move back to the carrier to the arm. Yeah, carry, uh, fighters are much harder to detect than a big 10,000 ton carrier. And as such, you can use them for surprise attacks, hitting the enemy, doing things like that. Um, and you can put box launches on them, as fighters with box launches can be extremely deadly and can launch significant payloads from relative distance. You know, uh, uh, an FAC with box launches, they can have 16 size 4 box launches and fire 64 missiles with 4 of them. That's a lot of damage from, from just four ships, and you can go and rearm and reload and then, then fire them again. Next, fighters can be mass-produced, which protects your carrier, as you can replace fighters, but you cannot replace carriers. So yeah, you can mass-produce fighters. They have their own production line. You can keep making fighters without actually needing the shipyard, and so that is one of the biggest benefits. Now let's look at negatives. Negatives. Flexibility is an issue in terms of weapon choice, as box launchers will be your primary weapon, and point defense fighters are not considered very good as well, meaning that you may be locked into the strategy. Yeah, um, beam weapons aren't very good on fighters, honestly. Um, they got considerably nerfed from the EB-6 to G-Sharp, um, and as such, box launchers are going to be your primary weapon, so it's going to lock you into that path of having to use the logistics, having to move things, having to do all that kind of stuff. Next. Because you are using fighters and carriers, the micromanage as micromanagement aspect is significant, and until the game has better UI to handle this, it can be very intimidating and annoying to do every time. Yeah, if you pick fighters and carriers, you are going to be micromanaging a hell of a lot, and it's going to be really, really tough. I'll have videos on this in the future explaining why it's so annoying, but it, it's one of these things where you have to be really know what you're doing and be, and be better with it, but... um. Yeah, so consider if you are going fighters and carriers, you have the micromanagement is definitely a negative. Uh, next, uh, you need to set up a logistics chain that supports moving fighters to your carrier as well as consistently producing them. Yep, you got to set up a logistics chain on top of getting the missiles and start getting the the carriers with the, the fuel and all that stuff. You got to set up the supply chain, which adds on extra administration costs essentially to to getting your navy up. Um, and number number four, fighters are extremely vulnerable to AMM spam, and you can lose entire squadrons in seconds if not careful. Yeah, fighters can just be evaporated in seconds as they only take one or two hits to actually bring a fighter down, and once they're down, the carrier will have very little, if any, actual defensive capability. Okay, that is pretty much it for going over the negatives and positives there. That was a lot of talking. I hope I hope you guys followed along. <laughs> Um, a few honorable mentions for design doctrines are stealth ships and orbital weapon platform and jump defense. I am not going to go into those today as those are more specialized, but you know, they can be very cool as well. Um, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Um, this was kind of just discussing overall all of the doctrines and the carriers and, and, and why the negatives and positives so you guys can make a better, um, thought you know you can think more about it and make better decisions when it comes to actually picking what kind of ships you want to make what weapons you want to put on the ships the negatives of putting those weapons if you want to use carriers um missile ships long range swarm missiles all of these kinds of things that you can add let me know if i missed anything i'll see you next time please like comment and subscribe and uh yeah bye bye